the enshrinement festivities on Saturday, the game tonight. There are also a bunch of other events surrounding the two, like a Huddle for 100 event that took place this morning. Young football fans helping to clean up local parks and then sticking around to play a little football afterward, a Play 60 football clinic with NFL legends. As for the football uh, game tonight uh, that we will be watching, let's head back to the field right now and check in with Steve White from the sidelines. We already heard we're not going to see many of, you know, the big names and the starters that we're all familiar with. Who will we be seeing? Yeah, Lindsay, as you see the Broncos, a lot of their starters are on the field warming up right behind me. That's just to kind of get ready for the pregame protocol. But some of the young players that we might see who could be starters are tight end Noah Fant from the Broncos, a player who they drafted in the first round. But the big name, Drew Locke, the quarterback from the University of Missouri, the second round draft pick. Now, he's not going to start. Kevin Hogan will be the starter, and I've been told that he may play a full quarter depending on how the series work out, but then Locke will come in at some point and finish out the half. He may go into the, th into the second half, but Brett Rippon will take over there. As for the Falcons, I've been told they really want to look at some of their running back depth. You know, Devontae Freeman, he is their main starter, but they know his durability issues, so they want to look at guys like Edo Smith and some players behind him to see exactly what they have in case Freeman, as we've seen in the past, goes down with injury. Good stuff, Stephen. We'll check back in with you again before kickoff. Let's check on the Bills now out in Rochester, New York. Day seven of training camp practices for them. Daniel Jeremiah out there watching practice for us says John Brown looks like he's going to be a top target for Josh Allen, who apparently looks more comfortable this year. Does he feel it? The second year quarterback sat down with Jeremiah and Andrew Siciliano after practice. How is year number two? How is training camp number two? It's it's night and day as far as knowing what's going on. Uh, obviously, we got the schedule down, you know, being in the dorms, um, understanding how a defense kind of works now, and being in the same system with Coach Dable for that year, it's been on. It's been awesome. You know, we're able to bounce a lot of different ideas off each other. Um, I'm very in tune with what you know goes into the offense and. Uh, Coach Dable's done a fantastic job with taking things out that aren't necessarily my strengths and putting in things that I, I really like. Man, it's a whole new group you've got on the offensive yeah. side of the ball. How's it coming together? It's a lot of new faces. Uh, you know, there's a lot of challenges that comes with, comes with that. You know, just getting guys in tune on the same page, um, getting different body languages down with our receivers. But for the most part, I, th I think we've done a really good job. I think we've got a lot of smart guys that are really tough, that really love the game of football, and I'm excited for this group. When you look at this version of the Buffalo Bills, what, what's that formula going to look like for you this year? Well, I think, one, it comes down to protecting the football, um, you know, limiting all the turnovers that we have and making sure that we're, we're getting in the right situations. So that's one. We, we know our defense is going to go out there and do their job, you know, with Coach McDermott and Coach Frazier out there, all the great pieces that they have on the defensive side. You know, in turn, our, our side on offense got to score the ball and we'll get the chance. Um, we're going to take care of the ball. We're going to try to move it and, and attack when we have the opportunity. Sam Darnold also heading into his second year in the AFC East, coming off a couple of really good practices, according to the beat writers in attendance. And also Brian Baldinger, who was out there watching today, said the quarterback got the ball out of his hands, put it in good spots, didn't take sacks, didn't turn it over. As for Adam Gase's take? Well, he's picked it up well. You know, he's had some days where the defense gets the best of him. Greg throws a lot of looks at him, which is great. Our offense needs they, they need that. Yeah. Because you don't always get to see all that stuff. And that challenges him, but he does a good job. Is if he makes a mistake, he doesn't make another one. A big year for Darnold and the Jets went out and made a big move to support him today. Joe Douglas getting Ryan Khalil to come out of retirement to play for the Jets. A 12-year NFL veteran with five Pro Bowls and two All-Pro selections under his belt. He's experienced. He's a good locker room guy. He fills a position of need. What do you think this does for Darnold, Sean? Well, it's an immediate upgrade both physically and mentally. I think for the impact on Sam Darnold, the eyes and the experience of Ryan Clear are going to pay dividends. Obviously, they're a couple of Trojans, so they've already known each other. They're friends. But he's going to create – a, a little bit of calm on third down. When Greg Williams is designing all these exotic blitzes, Ryan Khalil has seen it all before. He, he could slow the game down a little bit, help him out with the mic call, help him out with figuring out where the safeties are rotating and, and how the blitzes are happening. He's going to get everybody on the same page, more importantly up front, something that Sam won't have to worry about. So I think Ryan Khalil, provided that he's in shape, because who knows if he's right. been eating bonbons for the last couple months thinking he was retired, but I think he's still one of the most athletic centers in the league. So he's going to help out on the second level for Le'Veon Bell as well. Center, you don't have to be in shape. Center? Well, round, round is a shape. But, you know, <laughs> most veteran quarterbacks, it's interesting you ask them, 
Okay, if you had to, who would you rather do without? Your starting wide receiver or your center? And they'd go, I can, I can find someone else to throw the ball to. That security up front for a yeah. young quarterback like Donald would be huge. So you're saying we're irreplaceable? Even though you're out of shape, right. you're irreplaceable. Hey, Coach said it. I'm not going to argue with him. I, I mentioned that Baldy was out at practice. He noticed that they were doing a lot of unscripted work. What's the yeah. thought there? Well, you, you have one of two choices, uh, when you, particularly when you talk about Adam Gase coming in with a new quarterback. You throw everything at him and see what sticks, and then kind of sort it out later. Or you piecemeal it, going, okay, we're going we're gonna to develop this expertise, this expertise, as we alluded to earlier. earlier you, you make it unscripted, Greg Williams is going to throw some stuff at you. He very likely wanted to know what Darnold could handle, what he could handle, how he could handle, the pace of it, because uh, this was going to be new for him, if nothing else, just as a benchmark to say, okay, that's good, now, now let's focus on X, Y, and Z. Yeah, when you do unscripted stuff, it's all about growth. For a young quarterback and now he didn't have a, the luxury of saying okay i'm gonna look at the sheet and i'm gonna memorize the formation and memorize what they're gonna be and so kind of makes them work off the cuff the other thing it does that tells me you don't trust your defense coordinator because you don't want him to see the script because <laughs> now he's right. gonna all of a sudden design Those a place that just happens that. to take away the screenplay you so creatively designed so uh, that, that's great work for a young quarterback but it's really great for the offense too to see sam darnold handling all that. Hey, this is unscripted. This is not something we walked through two hours ago. So now he's thinking on his feet and he can handle it all, whether we're in the huddle or out of the huddle. So that's why I always give him the scripts with just the personnel. I never right. put the play in there. You're smart. Here's yeah. the down and distance, the personnel. That's all you need. That's why you're in the ring of honor. Uh, more <laughs> like you'd see in a game, and we'll see more game-like situations for them tomorrow. Jet scrimmaging at Rutgers University. That's right. Rutgers, uh, night the practice. birthplace of college football. They play college football. Host the J-E-T-S. Jets, Jets, Jets. In that right public, if you want to go out. Uh, they are quick, they are powerful, and they prove it every time they run through a defense. But they're also quiet and polite. So how good at running back these running backs be at running their mouths? We are putting Saquon Barkley on the mic and Todd Gurley on the